You have been involved in this blog brawl with Paul Krugman, New York Times writer, Nobel laureate, darling of the establishment uh, economic world. That really has just, I mean, it is all over the blogosphere. Now, I see banks, uh, endogenous and exogenous money, Minsky, New Keynesian, neoclassical models, a lot of this uh, stuff that maybe only a PhD econ uh, economist would really understand. So, help us just first break down really what is the crux of the argument that you two have gotten into? Well, the crux of the argument is that I'm one of the group of non-conventional economists who argue you can't model the economy without including the role of banks, debt and money. And Krugman's part of the economic establishment, which for 30 or 40 years uh, has got away with arguing you can model uh, a capitalist economy as if it has no banks in it, no money and no debt. And we've been screaming for ages from the sidelines saying, hey, you can't do that. You just don't have a model of capitalism if you don't include those components. Along comes the financial crisis. Characters like me predicted it using models including money, banks and debt. And now Krugman comes along and says, oh, well, I can't see why you should actually bother having models of uh, banks, debt and money uh, in macroeconomics. They are irrelevant. They don't matter to the macroeconomy, which frankly leaves somebody like me and I hope most people in the real world gobsmacked because, hey, we're living in the middle of a banking crisis caused by too much debt. One thing that, that this has escalated to is this final back and forth. You have Krugman, and you know, this is something that I, I've seen you write about, a lot of people on the blogosphere write about, his commenters write about. It appears that he took part of your post out of context in a way that seems really disingenuous. What happened? Well, the type of model that Krugman works on, the models where they believe they can model the entire macro economy as if it's one blown up individual. And if you're really lucky, they make it two blown up individuals. And they, that's what they call the micro foundations approach to macroeconomics. Mm -hmm. Now, from my point of view, that's nonsense. You can't do it. And actually, the, the reasons why you can't are actually proven by very good conventional neoclassical economists. That simply doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, but they, the people like Krugman have built the model ignoring these strong, well-founded theoretical criticisms of that whole approach. And we can bring it up. He gave updates to that post and said, uh, essentially, time to move on. We're done. Uh, this is it. And uh, we have it right there. He went on to sound like he essentially called you a heretic. At least he said, I'm all for listening to heretics, but blah, blah, blah. So I guess my question, is this a Paul Krugman personality thing, do you think? Or is this more representative of how neoclassical economists think that they need to be right even when they're wrong? It's more that the neoclassicals think they're right no matter what. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have they have a vision of the economy that has it in equilibrium or nearby, uh, disturbed a bit from equilibrium by shocks, and all the ups and downs are just these exogenous shocks. And we've been saying for a long, long time, you can't model the economy as if it's in equilibrium because, hey, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's out of equilibrium, and especially at times right, right now. So there's, there's other approaches to do it, dynamic modeling that I do, mm -hmm. that give you models that include banks that actually give you the result that, yes, you can have crises like the one we're in now, and I first wrote a model of that nature back in 1995. Now, Krugman, has, they've always ignored us, and this, what they've simply said is, oh, you don't understand our models, therefore we can ignore you, mm -hmm. which is a bit like a Ptolemaic astronomer saying to Galileo, you don't understand how my particular bunch of, 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 of circle models, therefore I can ignore you, mm -hmm. but Galileo is saying, hey, your tables are inaccurate. Mm -hmm. People can't navigate the Mediterranean anymore because your tables have, have lost relevance. There's something wrong with the core of your model. Mm -hmm. In my case, I'm saying, Paul, if your models were right, we wouldn't be in a financial crisis. This has become a really big deal. I've seen people all over the blogosphere writing about this conversation and this back and forth between you and Krugman and a few others that are peppered in there. Why do you think this has gotten so much buzz? <laughs> well, I think it's a pretty good start when you get uh, somebody talking about your work in the New York Times and then expressing incredulity and then making the mistake of engaging in a discussion afterwards because 
Uh, so Krugman actually set it up by replying to me. But what it then exposed, it was, it's finally the beginnings of a debate. Because you'd imagine, if you're outside of economics, that if there's competing views into how the economy operates within economics, then surely there are regular debates. The reality is, no, the neoclassicals ignore people like me who are critical. So once you suddenly get one of the neoclassicals acknowledging that we even exist, mm -hmm. suddenly, bang, mm -hmm. it causes an explosion of discussion right across the blog sphere. Mm -hmm. And normally their comeback is, you don't understand our models, therefore we can ignore you. Mm -hmm. But we're saying, hey, your models didn't predict the, predict the financial crisis. We can ignore your models. Mm -hmm. And so, that, that is a big shift. So that's a big shift. So I know you have said in the past that neoclassical economics is going to uh, end or change literally one funeral at a time. Are you saying, though, that this actually is yep. starting to advance the conversation in a way that is material? I think it's the beginning of it. It's, it's People here certainly outside are now realizing that they can't leave economics to the economists. And when they look inside it and see how unrealistic the mainstream are and see people like myself and the, the MMT crowd as well from the post-Keynesian position and even Austrians, they're saying, hey, maybe the people who have been marginalized make, make more sense than the mainstream does. It's time we supported them. So maybe we can break down the neoclassical citadel from the outside with the help of the public.